Welcome back to this series of Black Hat Fast Chats. Terry Sweeney here with Black Hat. And joining me now is Alexander Hyde, Chief Research Officer with Security Scorecard. Alexander, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Terry. Great to be with you. Uh, we're looking ahead out on the, the, the threat horizon. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, as, as, as you gaze out there, uh, what do you see as some of the emerging threats that uh, our viewers should be aware of? So it, it seems that the the, the big uh, the big emerging threat vectors that are going to be uh, that are going to be a problem for some time for quite some time is going to be the issue of uh, vulnerabilities within these third party libraries. We saw that happen this year with the log four js uh, vulnerability that's been exploited basically uh, around the entire internet and the deployment the, the deployment of ransomware as a payload is going to uh, but basically that goes hand in hand with these emerging threats. So we've seen an increase of ransomware uh, over the last few years, but I, I believe that's it's not going to slow down because it's effective and companies have shown that they're willing to pay the ransom a lot of the times and uh, the, and that uh, and uh, attackers are going to continue uh, leveraging um, that basically the easiest method of exploit that they can in order to, to uh, try to exfiltrate the, the most amount of money they can. And while it, while there's um, a lot of it kind of uh, run for the most part by organized crime, but we're also going to be seeing a big, and we're already seeing it, a, a crossover between advanced persistent state uh, or advanced persistent threat actors, or state sponsored groups, and organized crime groups. Uh, whether or not it's an organized crime person who might have gotten caught and is now working for the government, or if they're just been intermeshed since the beginning, um, we're seeing uh, there's uh, we're seeing governments starting to fund their black ops through ransomware. And uh, and bring in elements of organized crime. So uh, I guess in a nutshell, the thing things are about to get very real. <laughs> well, thanks for that sobering view. I'm 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 curious if you might dig in a little bit around the the, the nation state threat. Um, is it possible that uh, innocent bystander organizations might be caught in the cyber crossfire, if you will, um, if something should really heat up and uh, we, we start to see retaliation or um, offensive measures um, become more of a, a thing in the coming months? Uh, I, I would say that there, we will probably start to see uh, de the denial of service attacks starting to make a, an emergence back as well. Uh, and uh, when, when it comes to the the average company or small business being impacted by these global cyber wars, uh, yes, I, I believe there will be impacts on, uh, or is it uh, the term of warfare collateral damage? Because the, uh, a lot of the a lot of the hosting, uh, basically cloud hosting, everyone's sharing the same infrastructure. So if uh, governments are attacking infrastructure that's uh, that's hosting their target, if that infrastructure is hosting a bunch of other things, it's also going to be the collateral damage. And we're, 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 we're starting to see that uh, play out over the last few years, but I believe it's going to uh, escalate, especially, um, especially with the emergence of vulnerabilities that are basically components of software that runs the internet. I'm sure you get this question a lot uh, at uh, cocktail parties and other social gatherings, um, but what can enterprises do to stay ahead of these hackers, um, especially as the attack sophistication continues to just surprise us and, and, and frustrate us? So the it's definitely a cat and mouse game. And the way that the ways that companies have been successful in battling a lot of these issues is through uh, through the use of uh, con uh, continuous monitoring, continuous mitigation, and continuous threat intelligence. And but what I mean by that is, uh, as opposed to checking systems or checking the, the threat landscape every now and then for uh, existing threats, there needs to be dedicated resources that are constantly looking at vectors of attack uh, and potential vectors of vectors of attack. Uh, and and but putting mitigations and uh, putting remediation mitigations in place because the uh, fact of the matter is if someone's on the internet long enough they're going to get hacked the the best thing to do is to make yourself the least profitable target of opportunity so mm -hmm. if an attacker can if an attacker can go after someone else that happens to be in your same vertical or industry uh, that's preferable to having uh, to actually being the the victim itself. So it's uh, a lot of times it's avoiding becoming the lowest hanging fruit, and that can be achieved through co continuous monitoring. Alex, talk a little bit about um, how public and private sectors might uh, uh, 
be able to collaborate more effectively to, to help mitigate the, the ongoing threats that we're seeing. Um, what's, what's your best sense of that? Sure. Uh, so that there is, so I guess that that could be the silver lining to to the, these clouds. There, um, so specifically, the the World Economic Forum has put together a, a cyber cyber readiness uh, a program where both countries and companies can get involved and uh, basically participate in, in war games and participate in uh, uh, scenarios that where you can make yourself ready for the for the the worst case scenario type attack. And I, I would definitely encourage people to check out weform.org to, to check out the World Economics Forum, specifically their, their, cyber, their cyber resilience uh, programs. Well, uh, Alex, I appreciate your comments. Uh, if knowledge is power, uh, uh, I think we're all a little bit less scared about the future. So th thanks for joining us today for this Black Hat Fast Chat. Thanks for having me, Terry. It's great, great talking. We've been talking with Alexander Hyde, Chief Research Officer with Security Scorecard. This has been Terry Sweeney for Black Hat. Thanks for joining us for this Fast Chat series. We'll see you next time.